اوكي نقول سلام right اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I seek refuge in Allah against shaitan the rejected and I begin with the name of Allah the eternal source of mercy and grace I greet you all with the greetings of peace assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may the peace and blessings of Almighty Allah be upon one and all of you and welcome again to tonight's halqa jazakallah for joining us halqa will be presented by brother Sadiq the topic is the nature of men uh brother Sadiq over to you sounds like a very interesting topic uh look forward to the presentation and uh, thereafter we'll go around for questions and comments inshallah okay Sadiq over to you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <clears throat> um, the topic may seem a bit strange, um, but uh, why I've chosen to do this topic is if you look at uh, these verses that you come across when reading the Quran. Wakanal insan wa jula, for man is given to hasty deeds. Wakulikal insan wa da'ifa, for man was created weak. In the insan al only man is in loss. And there are a few others as well. And it, it seems quite a negative way to describe man. And it seems like it's it's in our nature or we created in this manner. So I decided to look at this a little further and see if this really is the case. Is a man really useless or, or like, you know, with so much negative qualities? Um, let's just touch a bit on the physical creation first. Um, from Surah Sajda, verses 7 to 9. He who has made everything which he has created most good, he began the creation of man with nothing more than clay, and made his progeny from a quintessence of the nature of a fluid despised, but he fashioned him in due proportion, and breathed into him something of his spirit, and he gave you the faculties of hearing and sight and feeling and understanding. Little things do you give. This is uh, a fairly good summary of our physical creation starting from the beginning from uh, clay and then also from uh, semen and uh, the, 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 the faculties of hearing and sight. Um, the words used to describe the creation, the physical creation of men is, uh, there are many, this is some, there may be a few which is not on this list. Uh, so, so all sounding clay, hama in black mud, tin, clay to rob, dust, ma, water, nutfa, semen, alak, clinging substance. If um, if you look like it in Surah Mu'min on Surah 23, there's a good progression which shows the 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 alak is like in, like a later stage actually, not maybe an earlier stage as well. And uh, these words are used not only for insan, but used for bashar as well, from what I could find. So the same words are used for the creation of, it's either use sometimes insan, sometimes bashar, or like one surah 15, I think verse 26 uh, mentions bashar and two verses later talks insan or the other way around. So it shows you the same thing, basically insan and bashar. Although, if you look at Surah Muminun, verse 33, he is no more than a man like yourselves. He eats of that which you eat, and he drinks of that which you drink. And then again, with Yusuf al Islam, that the, 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 the lady is describing, this is not a man. Um, so it seems like Bashar is like the physical appearance or the physical part of the human being, and Insan maybe is the emotional part or the characteristics, but. Um, it, it could be interchangeable as well, it seems. Um, so I'll just look at some of these verses which describes the insan. Hulikal insanu da'ifa from Surah Nisa, verse 28. For man was created weak. This also doesn't uh, seem like it's referring to the physical creation being weak. I'll just read the context from verse 26. Allah does wish to make clear to you and to show you the ordinances of those before you. And he does wish to turn to you in mercy. And Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Allah does wish to turn to you, but the wish of those who follow the last is that you should turn away from him far, far away. Allah does wish to lighten your difficulties for men who are created weak. 
uh, it seems here that Allah, you know, Allah wants to guide us, have mercy upon us, and lighten the burdens for us is in the task that we need to do. And uh, it's because also that we are weak, we are easily influenced by shaitan, and shaitan has been described to us as a uh, uh, mubin, a clear enemy, a sworn enemy, as in Surah Yusuf, verse 5. Um, man is ungrateful. When danger threatens you at sea, you call upon him and forget all others you are wont to invoke. But when he brings you safe to land, you turn away from him. Man is ever ungrateful. Similar verses are uh, occur quite often in the Quran. Um, I chose this one, uh, and you'll see the next. The next one I'm doing is very similar, and again there'll be a, a third one very similar to it. It shows the the how how men uh, like we 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 so in this case is ungrateful to Allah so that when when things are going difficult we turn to Him we remember Him and then when things are going easy then we easily to forget it we, we shows how ungrateful man is. Uh, 1434 it's in a slightly different context about uh, the uh, numerous blessings which we are unable to count. But the 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 last the, the point is the same that we have these blessings or when when we need Allah then we want to turn to Him but when things are going easy then we we forget Him. Kana uh, Yausa. Yet when we bestow our favors on men, He turns away and becomes remote on on His side, instead of coming to us. And when evil sees Him, He gives Him up to despair. Again, a similar verse like the previous one. It just uh, when when things are going hard, it's easy. Men usually just they either become despondent, despair. You know, we don't have hope that things are gonna uh, get better. Um, the next verse, for idahu khasimu mubin, does not men see that it is we who created him from sperm? Yet behold, he stands forth as an open adversary. Um, there is an interesting uh, uh, commentary that I came across for these verses that the ability to argue and express himself from man becoming from uh, uh, a drop of sperm, which is like nothing, and then he has this ability to express himself and and uh, uh, develop arguments, etc. But uh, in the context, I think it's it's more uh, in that man man becomes. Uh, adversary or ch tries to challenge Allah, his creator. Um, the, he wants to deny he's, he's going to be resurrected again. Uh, and he wants to challenge. Uh, I'll just read the context from Surah Yasin. To Allah belongs the mystery of the heavens and the earth. And the decision of the hour of judgment is in a twinkling of an eye or even quicker. For Allah is power over all things. Ah, sorry, wrong, wrong. Wrong surah I'm reading from. Does not man see that it is he who created him from sperm? Yet behold, he stands forth as an open adversary and he makes comparisons for us and forgets his own origin and creation. He says, who can give life to dry bones and decomposed ones and as at, at that? Um, so I think in the context, the Hasim, the, the adversary is, is not just uh, the ability to be able to express, but more that um, the mankind actually denies the is going to be resurrected after his death. Again, uh, similar, we have created, you have explained in various ways in this, in this Quran for the benefit of mankind, all kinds of examples. But Ben is most contentious. Uh, man is a cre creature of haste. Soon will I show you my signs, but I don't but do not ask me to hasten, hasten them. Um, Surah 17, the man, uh, the prayer that man makes for uh, for good, he's supposed to make for good, he makes for evil. So man wants uh, uh, if you look at, if you want to understand this, maybe in a context is uh, when someone does us wrong, we want justice. We want the wrongdoers to be punished straight away, and we sometimes want to be rewarded straight away for for things that we we may have done. 
but sometimes it's necessary to wait and hold on because uh, sometimes those who you think is your enemy or you want them to be punished, if you give them time, they actually may change your ways. And as another verse says, like, you know, uh, repel evil with that which is good and uh, who is your enemy may become a close friend of yours. Uh, so, so sometimes it's it's good to just wait and and let the the law of Allah take its course and wait for Allah to make the decision. We shouldn't be uh, wanting uh, the punishment or the rewards or whatever it is to come instantly. We should uh, let, uh, we have have some sabr and uh, and and persevere and accept Allah's uh, way of 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 uh, working. Allah sometimes gives us respite for our own good. So if you think of it even ourselves, if we if we want others to be punished also immediately or rewarded immediately, then you should also think of ourselves. If Allah had to punish us immediately for whatever wrong we do, then we won't we won't be around today. Uh, man is stingy. insanu katuro. Say even if you possess the treasures of the mercy of my Lord. And you would surely hold them back for fear of spending them. Man is indeed stingy. We are dependent on material things. So naturally, we would hold them back uh, and hold on to them when we have abundance of them, thinking that it will, it will turn, it will, uh, you know, it will run out. Um, so sometimes you laugh at people that uh, are, are look that they are rich, they're doing well in their, their jobs or business, whatever it is, but maybe they grew up poor and, you know, things weren't there, and then so now when they do have have wealth, they sometimes feel uh, fearful of spending it, thinking that it will it will get uh, get finished quickly. Man is a transgressor. In the in the insano nay, but man does transgress all bounds. Um, I think uh, also did touch on this uh, verse uh, last week. And then the next verse says that in, in that he looks uh, at himself as being self-sufficient, not in need of of uh, Allah. We think we we can do things on ourselves. We don't need Allah. Or we, we want to play God as uh, Sabir Ahmed explains it. In uh, um, Jahula, we did indeed offer the trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, but they refused to undertake it being afraid thereof, but man undertook it. He was indeed unjust and foolish. Or as another translation puts it, he, he wrongs himself unknowingly. Now, I'm not gonna go into what the trust is or, or why man is unjust and foolish. Um, just to touch on it, the trust some says is the vice gerunds Khalifa on the earth. Or some say it is the, the, the free will. And then I came across this in the commentary and then fail to measure up to the moral responsibility arising from the reason and the comparative free will with which he has been endowed. And this seems to fit in with what uh, my presentation about is about today, is that uh, the, the, the responsibility, we don't measure up to what is required or expected from us. We fall short of it. And that's why we wrong ourselves unknowingly or are foolish. In the insan al it's uh, one way that you come across often from Surah Asr. In al insana khulika halua. Truly, man was created very impatient, fretful when evil touches him, and niggardly when good reaches him. Uh, I found a interesting uh, again is from Muhammad Asad, which looks at tries to look at this word halua in a positive way, not. Uh, as in uh, impatient or anxious as most will translate it. He translated it as inner restlessness. And, and this restlessness can be looked at uh, negatively or positively. And if you look at an, the next two verses, fretful when evil touches him and negatively when good reaches him, it it's shows the negative uh, part of it. But then the, the verses continue, illal musallin. Uh, onwards, and uh, and that, that he says is the positive uh, uh, result of this restlessness. Uh, if you give man a taste of mercy from ourselves and then withdraw it from him, behold, he is in despair and falls into blasphemy. But if we give him a taste of our favors after adversity has touched him, he is sure to say, All evil has departed from me. 
Behold, he falls into exaltation and pride. So this verse again, see the, the below is the similar verses and I already did touch on two other uh, similar type of verses, which shows that uh, men just, depending on our conditions, we change how we are. We, we, we don't, we, when things are bad, we, we remember Allah, we turn to him or we become despondent. And when things are good, it's easy to forget that we ever were in such difficulties uh, before. Fi uh, Ahsanitokwim, again, a very common verse. We can indeed create a man in the best of molds. Then do we are basing to be the lowest of the low. So the, the, the examples that we've come across uh, before this one are all negative. And then we see that is does the nature of men. It's, it's all uh, negative things, weak, uh, impatient, uh, ungrateful. And then we come across a verse that says we were created in the best of molds, which which actually turns the whole thing around and says we actually are the best creation. So then what is all these negative characteristics then? Um, just to touch on the best of modes again, I think it's, it's, it's not necessary in the physical sense. We, we're not the strongest. We're not the strongest of creation. We're not the fastest. Although they, um, there is something, uh, the, the ability for the thumb and the forefinger you know, to hold a pen, that's something I don't think any other animals can do. And, and that's linked to intelligence and, 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 and speech, the ability to speak intelligently. Uh, uh, I think uh, if I remember from my studies, they, they looked at the Stone Age tools or the Iron Age, and when the, the, the tools became smaller is when they, when they say, or they, they think is when the, when speech came about, so the fine motor skills, ability to write, etc. Uh, so in that sense, maybe physically we are in, uh, in some form the best of most, but it more seems that uh, we have the best potentials to to do good. In that sense, uh, uh, probably more than the, uh, the physical sense. Um, we have the ability to make the most of what you have been given. So everyone has different circumstances, different environments they grow up in. And they, we have the ability to make the most of those circumstances to do what we need to do. Um, and then there are exceptions. So we, we covered Surah Hud, verse 11, Surah Maharij, Surah Teen, and Asr. I'll just read those exceptions. So we have that verse that man is impatient or whatever it is. And then we come, not so those who show patience and constancy and work righteousness. For them is forgiveness of sons and a great reward. Um, then the Surah Maharij, uh, it was that man is uh, cre uh, created with this restlessness or anxious. And then it says, not so those devoted to prayer, those who remain steadfast to the prayer. And it's quite a long list. You can see in the verses for verse 22 to verse 35. So the description there and it's good to read it on your own time. We see that it is uh, like, you know, upholding your trusts, uh, uh, controlling your desires, etc. cetera. Um, Suratin, accept such as believe and do righteous deeds for they shall have a reward unfailing. And Surah Asad, accept such as have faith and do righteous deeds and join together, together in the mutual teaching of truth and of patience and constancy. So there are this negative there's negative characteristics, but then there's exceptions to these, or like how these verses have it. So there is this man will be, um, let me just read Surah 11, verse 11, just to, um, so from verse 9, if you give man a taste of mercy from ourselves and then we'll throw it from him, behold, he is in the span, falls into blasphemy. But if you give him a taste of our favors after adversity has touched him, he is sure to say, all evil has departed from me. Behold, he falls into exaltation and pride. Not so do those who show patience and constancy and work righteousness. For them is forgiveness of sins and a great reward. So there is this negative characteristics, but then there is exception, exceptions to this. And then the exceptions, if you look at it closely, is it shows that it's, it's, it's those that actually... Um, Make an effort against the 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 the, the way we uh, we going like that. It's easier easier maybe to do wrong and more difficult to do good as we come to or come now to these verses. 
Surah in Chicago, oh, all you men in verily, you are ever dwelling on towards your Lord, painfully dwelling, but you shall meet him. Kadihun ila rabbika kadahan. And then Surah Balad, verily, we have created men into twelve and uh, struggle. Lakat khalatnal insana fi kabad. And then the day when men shall remember all that he strove for. Sa. Uh, so life is not a breeze. It's, 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 um, the translations make it seem more daunting than it is, maybe. You're toiling, you know, it's painfully toiling, but it is, it's not the easy part as we'll come again to the next, uh, next uh, few slides, we'll see. It's a, it's a struggle, it's, it's toiling, it's working hard. Um, Surah, Surah Insan, Surah, I think it's Dahr, verse 2. Verily, we created man from a drop of mingled sperm in order to try him. Naptalihi. So we gave him the gifts of hearing and sight. Uh, and then, uh, example in Surah Fajr, now as for man, when, he, when his Lord tries him, giving him honor and gifts, then says he, Paftav, my Lord has honored me, but when he tries him, restricting his subsistence for him, then he says in despair, my Lord has humiliated me. So the trials that you are given is, is both positive and negative. When things are going good, it's a trial. When things are going bad, it's a trial as well. Um, so, so if you look, it's, it's Surah Fajr verses 15 and 16. And then the next verse says, Nay, nay, but you honor not the orphans, nor do you encourage one another to feed the poor. And you devour inheritance with all with greed and you love with inordinate love. So these are some of the negative characteristics that we have. And it's from Surah Balad, but he made no haste on a path that is steep. And what will explain to you the path that is steep? So again, from the, the path that is steep, it is the freeing of the bondman or the giving of food in the day of privation to the orphan of claims of relationship or to the indigent down in the dust. Then will he be of those who believe and enjoy patience and constancy and self-restraint and enjoying deeds of kindness and compassion. Such are the companions on the right hand. So these again uh, fall, fall in with the exceptions. Um, so, so to conclude, man has many negative characteristics, but we have the best potentials. We have been created uh, Ahsanitakwim. Uh, the negatives come to the fore if you do not offer resistance. So we need to, to work to achieve the su a success. So we, the, we have to take the path that is steep. We have to do uh, these that will benefit others. We need to believe in Allah. We need to do, uh, don't do what harms others. We need to uphold and encourage truth, practice and encourage sabr. Um, so to conclude, I I uh, hope I, I explained it clearly that, that you you can understand the point I'm trying to get through is that uh, life is not so easy. Maybe it's easier to 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 do wrong, but to do good, it's it, it takes some effort. You need you need to strive. You need to 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 actually work towards doing good. As the verses, you you can only get for what you strive for, and on the day of judgment. That's when you'll see uh, the result of what you have striven for. Okay, shukran. That's why I end. Okay, Jazakallah, uh, Sarik. This is a very interesting uh, uh, presentation, and the way you took a look at the verses. Um, I, I, um, so, so, just on 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 this usage of the word insan in Bashar, I think, you know, you you might, you, you know, you just made me think a little bit there. And I, I think maybe we should spend some more time at some at some stage just to look at the difference in the usage between uh, these two uh, words and and those references that you gave uh, all happen to be insan. Ya yu'l insanu ma gharaka bi rabbika al-kareem. Ya yu'l insanu inna ka kadihun ila kadahan fa mulaqi. So it seems to be wherever there's something negative uh, uh about men uh that uh i haven't checked every occurrence but the verses you go to tonight seem to you know uh imply to me that the word insan is used uh and and uh, uh just displaying that there are negative qualities that the human being through freedom of choice uh 
can 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 choose to fall into the category either of the one like you say who goes against the tide and and strives for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the the path that is steep in other words requires him to exert energy to move in a certain path uh to to uh relieve the burdens of society and and help others and um or he can fall into in, in into the path of those who sort of become you know the spear of Allah's mercy and and the spear of life generally so um uh, mine is not a uh, a question is this something I, I I would like to pick up from this halqa and just take to do some more research if you have a comment on it please feel free but you just triggered some something you know some some some, uh, some thinking already in, in in me from your from your presentation yeah, I think you 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 uh, summed it up. I think quite nicely for what I wanted to say. If I wasn't clear enough, um, and then uh, yeah, Bashar and Insan is that what I uh, is what I came seems to be. I, if I may have missed some verses, I don't know. But from what I from what I looked at, that Bashar did to me seem like it was was more. That's why I said that you know they they, they talk about the uh, the prophets, the message, the people saying. You know, you follow a bachelor like yourselves, that he eats food and that. So that's why I said, and then insan, the, the, the negative qualities was all about the insan. So it was like, from what I from what I understand is that it's more the, you know, the character, the, the emotions of men, and that's not necessarily the physical part of men. Very interesting. Something to look at uh, that, uh, yeah, no, Jazakallah. Uh, I'll certainly look at it a little closer. Uh, never actually... Uh, look at it that way. Jazakallah for it. Okay, right. Uh, it just shows that uh, doesn't matter for how long you engage in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the oceans were in uh, and the trees were pens, never would you frustrate the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, you will always be humbled by what you learn from uh, you know every presentation in uh, the Alka. All right. Uh, let's go on for questions and comments. Uh, unmute yourselves or raise your hands. Uh, quite a few participants tonight. Try and get through everyone, inshallah. Uh, Sheikh, uh, from you, Al Asr Quran Academy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very well presented, Brother Sadiq. Uh, it's just that uh, I would like to give another angle. You see, when you talk about the fitra, fitra meaning the natural inclination or characteristic. You see, so as far as the Quran is concerned, you see, we cannot say insan has got a fitra. See, when you look at you look at the Quran, for instance, in chapter 16, verse number 49, Allah says, Walillah yes to do mafi samawati wa mafil art min dabbatin wal malai kati wahim laik sabirun. That unto Allah prostrate, meaning are obedient. Right. All the creatures, whatever is in the firmament, the earth, the creatures, Mindab, Batin, Wal Malaika, and angels, and all that. So, what we learn that besides insan, all the other creatures in the world, they have a fitra. To demonstrate that, for instance, we know, I mean, this old story that a chick will run away from the water and a duckling will want to go towards the water. And you find a carnivorous animal would not eat what you call uh, herbs, and the herbivorous will not eat uh, flesh, you see. So this is what we mean by even as a baby, even the first borns, right, the, the newborn, you find you give a, a goat baby, you try to eat, uh, give it uh, meat, you do not eat, because that is within its fitra, meaning its natural disposition, right? Now, you find the child, the insan child, the human child, he will do everything under the sun. He's, it seems that he is not bound by fitra. You see, by, by its natural instinct. Because he will, one minute he will want to go and touch the fire. Next minute he'll want to go into the swimming pool. Next minute he'll pick up a piece of fish or, or raw. He might even pick up a cockroach to eat it. You see, so insan does everything. You see. So, so you, you have put it, all the various actions of men, you have said it very, very well. All the various, like you see, the Quran tells us, right, uh, in chapter 53, we often quote, quote that verse, 
illama sa'a. Right? That when man, insan will have only that what he strives for. You see? Quran laysa lil insani illa ma sa'a. Right? That insan will have only that what he strives for. And you have brought it up very, very clearly by all the verses that uh, you see insan acts in different ways and different situation you find as I demonstrate to the insan child, newborn, and the newborn of other creatures. So what do you find? I don't know if you can call it the nature of insan, or we can call it a human disposition, which is the correct word, you see? Because I feel that insan does not have a nature or, or, or a natural inclination or an instinct like the other animals have. You see, so that is my, my question to you. Would you call it insan has got natural instinct or behavior in terms of the dictionary meaning of uh, fitra? You find the dictionary will tell you that, uh, that uh, nature, innate character, right, or natural disposition is fitra. That is, I want to comment on that. Thanks. It's uh, actually interesting uh, point. Uh, it's a difficult to, you know, I don't have a, a clear answer, but um, uh, yeah, to, to say if, if my topic was wrong, I think I also uh, didn't have, I, 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 I don't have a clear way to put it. So I thought maybe nature is maybe the best form, but I don't know if the nature and fitra is the same thing uh, uh, for what I chose. And in the example you gave of the child, um, it could be that verse in Surah Teen, which says that we'll be created in the best of mold. So we, we want to try out everything we have, the, the, uh, the, 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 world, the free will uh, compared to uh, other animals which don't have the free will. Like you said, the herbivores and the carnivores are fixed on their ways. So that's why we are, have the ability to, to, to want to test and try and, and think of what everything, uh, think of what everything to learn. And, and that's how we, we, we learn. But uh, whether it's fitra or not, I, I don't know if I can give you an answer. Sorry, uh, Sheikh, that uh, there's a verse in Surah, Surah Rum. Sorry, you recall that fitra uh, Allah lati fatra nas. So I'm I'm gonna yeah it's I think that he was thirty or something yeah I'm gonna post it here on the chat just for everyone to have a look at and uh, maybe you know it's, 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 it's chapter about. thirty verse thirty it yeah. actually defines what fitra really is uh, in addition to what the Sheikh Abdul Samad has said that this verse is actually because if if you look at the different aspects. What uh, Sadek has presented are the characters, the habits, positive, negative habits, etc. But if you look at chapter uh, verse, chapter thirty and verse thirty, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Himself defines what nature is or what fitra is. So that's a very important verse. <clears throat> The, the, the Arabic, if you read it, mm -hmm. وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينَ Hanifa. That's how it starts out. Right? That the, it, the pure faith is the face of man towards the deen of Hanifa, uh, the, Hanifa the righteous deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that, then, then Allah adds there, فِتْرَةَ اللَّهِ أَلَّتِي فَتَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا This is the true fitra. Or the true nature of man, right? Uh, the fatar and nas aleha, following the deen of uh, the, the Hanifa deen, the righteous deen which Allah has put in front of our faces, is 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 actually the fitra of man. All other things that Sadek has rightly pointed out, how outside of the confines of the fitra, how man acts positively or negatively. And this, this verse, Surah Rum, uh, tells you that outside the, 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 the circumstances that 
combine us to the fitra. La tabdila li khalqillah. There's no change in that. Man, by his creation and by the direction of Allah, tends towards the fitra. But obviously his emotions come into play and he starts acting in a negative or positive way. And then Allah says there, Zalika deenul qayyim. That this is the deen that is established. Right? And, and that's where uh, Sadak has pointed out all the other issues. So this is a very, very important verse if you want to really understand uh, what fitra is. And, and Brother Abdul Samad rightly said that as far as the nature is concerned, right, the, the nature does not specifically apply to man. It applies to all other creations, but not to man. Because man has the ability to change his ways negatively or positively. Okay. Uh, um, I think Yasadik also made a good point is that he said using, you know, what, what word. Uh, I, so, so the fact that the Quran uses the word fitra in the context also of the freedom of choice that man has, we just need to maybe relook at the definition. Uh, um, so, yeah, and here's a comment from uh, Sister Firoza. Uh, it's that like animals are programmed to act in a certain way, uh, uh, and uh, it's obviously based on on their survival, and that's how they how they how they live. Uh, humans are programmed to act upon intellect. Uh, they're not programmed to act in a certain way. They're given the freedom of choice, uh, but uh, that's their basically that's their ability. So I can read out the the comment here. Uh, animals are programmed to act in a certain way for survival, sometimes of the fittest. Uh, humans have intellect to make choices, uh, even situational choices when faced with situations that pose a threat to you in respect of your survival, uh, the fight uh, or flight, uh, or use of intellect to deal with the situation uh, based on values, uh, be it upbringing or religious. Okay, Jazakallah. Uh, interesting that. So let's move on. Anyone else? Questions, comments? Shabir? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, very interesting, Alka Sare. Uh, the question that Sheikh posed was actually quite interesting on its own to say that what is our natural disposition? What is our nature? I think it's more that we have the capacity to move in a specific direction, which again comes to choice. But I don't think we're naturally inclined to good in part of our choice. It's just that we need the direction and we have the capacity to, to grab the direction, to take it on and then that's why we have the Quran. Because man, if you leave him on his own to fulfill and satisfy himself and to fulfill his desires, he's always going to be selfish, always, always going to be foolish, always going to do the wrong. That opens up for that verse that says man is, is foolish for taking on this trust. Now, part of taking on the trust is he has chosen to do this. But why would Allah say the trust he chose? The reason for it and the purpose of why he chose it already makes him foolish to do that. Because there are so many verses, I can't remember them all. It says you made a covenant with Allah, you made an agreement with Allah that you are going to stay on the right path. But your innate nature is actually to move away from the wrong path because part of your nature is only to satisfy your desires. And there are verses that says we will actually accept the path of, of, of going wrong. We will, we will actually go and promote and follow shaitans and the shaitanic ways. So the fitra is only that you have the capacity to try and change your nature. That's what I think. Instead of you being part of your nature, it's actually a challenge towards your nature. I don't know if that will make sense, but that's the way I, I see it. What do you, do you have any comments, Sarek? We got all the different thoughts. I think that's an interesting way to look at it also. If, if, if you ask me the natural uh, way people want things easy, you, you know, you just want things to go easy for you. But but um, yeah, I think you, you, that's how you mentioned it, actually. So, yeah, to, to do things right, it's difficult. And it's maybe not in most people's nature to, to want to go against that 
easy life. Yeah, because I mean, why would Allah continuously redirect your thinking to give you the ability or to remind you that, you know what, um, here's the guidance, take on the guidance. Hmm. I mean, Allah talks about so many verses, say the majority choose the wrong, they do their own things, they follow their desires. Only yeah. those who use the intellect, in the sense where someone mentioned about intellect, is very interesting to say, you know, you will recognize the truth out there. You will recognize that you did make an agreement with Allah to, to overcome your basic desires. So intrinsically, I think man is, is prone to do wrong or is made to do wrong, but has the capacity to, to change that nature. That's, I know, that's just my understanding. And if you go to the Surah 4, verse 28, uh, I think the first one that I mentioned, that man was created weak. And then yeah. the verse what talks about the guidance of Allah, Allah wishes, you know, to... Uh, to uh, what's it? If you notice that Allah talks of Bashar, I know, that's just basically, like you mentioned, the physical makeup. Which means the physical makeup of the human needs to be fulfilled by specific desires. That is what you are made up of. You are only there for the flesh to satisfy your urges and your wants. It is also part of your ego and part of your, your struggle to be dominant. But if you look at the inside part, I don't know if I'm reading it right, but it seems like more of your social responsibility. You are part of the mankind and why do you behave in a way that is harmful to yourself and to the to, to mankind? So there is a difference. I think that's maybe where I see a slight difference in you being an insan and you being just basically uh, what they call it uh, a flesh and blood human, you know, just serving and working on your basic or satisfying your basic desires. I don't want to, uh, to go into it because I don't think there's a clear answer, but just, just something that I thought of while going, like you said, Bashar is, is the physical, right? And I, I seem to agree with that. I could be wrong. But then you see, if you look at his verse, right? He has made everything which he created most good. He began a creation of nothing but more than clay and made his progeny from the contestants of a nature of a fluid of spice. But he fashioned him in due proportion and breathed into him something of his spirit. So I think that 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 roof that Allah blows into us is that what makes us different from the animals and, and that makes us the inside what what does emotions and and characteristics which which can be it's just something that I thought about I don't think it's a good idea to go into nah. that discussion now nah. but it's just that's something that I thought about which, which well, I can agree with that us from from the the, the physical the physical uh, creatures or the animal animalistic part of our of our our ourselves maybe the rule is that part that Allah has given you to, to fight your basic desires, to fight your fitra. That's what I would think, but I agree with what you're saying, and it makes a lot of sense, but Allah is saying, I have no the rule in you, to make you what you can become. You can actualize your potentials and become better than what you basically set out to be done. Because look, even when, when Allah says, when, when he made it, then the, then the malaika and, and, and even the, the, the jinn said, you know, what are you making this creature for? It's like they knew the nature of this creature is it, yeah. worth nothing. It's a worthless creature. It's going to achieve nothing. It's, it's not going to emancipate itself. It's not going to be beneficial to anybody. It can't go further than thinking about itself. So Allah is saying, no, but I'll show you that this, this creature can become outstanding. Hmm. I think that's basically a part of our understanding. But Jazakallah, it's actually a lovely topic. Eh? Very interesting. Okay. Um, right, Slav. Can, can, I, can I come in, uh, Osi? Is this okay? Yeah. You see, this question of Bashar, if you look at the verses in the Quran uh, with, with, uh, in regards to the criticism of the Nabi, uh, that is Nabi Muhammad, and the other Anbiya, they were all being criticized. They are uh, only, a brush, uh, only a Bashar like us. And in the translation, they say, well, human or insan or whatever, right? And, and the fact that the, the, the enemies of the Nabi, the enemies of the Ambiya, could only understand the Bashar aspect of a human being. They did not realize that the Nabi has a, had a mission. 
to complete. And that mission takes the Nabi above the position of an ordinary Bashar or an ordinary mortal. And that is where we need to come in and look at what is the difference. Now, if you look at uh, the, the concept of Alasto, uh, Alasto Birabikum, right? Who is your Rab? Now, man has been programmed. The human element in man has been programmed throughout his life to recognize the Rububiyat of Allah. Who is your Rab? Right? And that recognition of the rububiyat developed the, the, the nafs evolution, in, in an evolutionary process from, its, from Amara, Awama, up to Mutma'inna. And, and that, 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 that recognition of the rububiyat does that. So man within himself has the capability of being positive, but the action of his nafs makes him act in a way that goes negative, right? So we go uh, Bashar if we don't recognize what is the mission of the human element in man or the rububiyat of man. And we look at chapter 7, verse 172, and chapter 33, verse 72 talks about this. Okay, Jazakallah. Aziz, sorry, I just, I just wanted to clarify something. Do you say that the prophets transcend being Bashar? They become better than Bashar? No, they, they were being recognized by their enemies as only being Bashar, only being uh, an earthling, a mortal. The, the, the enemies of the Ambiya did not realize that they were the, the people that they were criticizing had been sent by Allah with a special mission. And that mission was to promote the idea of Tawheed and Rububiya, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, okay. because, yeah, because, because it knows, because, because they were Bashar at all, all intents and purposes. Yeah, yeah, no, they were human, they, they were human beings, but with a, yeah. with, with a different kind of a mission. A mission, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it was Kulinama and Bashar or Mislukum Yuha. That's and, it, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, we're on the same page. Jazakallah, right? right. Let's move on. Anyone else, please unmute yourselves um, or uh, raise your hands and I'll come to you. Uh, this forum, uh, Alhamdulillah, we have a very substantial attendance. Very pleased that people are joining online. Uh, uh, but please also remember that we welcome all of your questions. Nothing to be shy about. Uh, any comments you'd like to make as well. This is an open forum. Uh, so please feel free to express your views or to ask your questions. And if you'd like to type your question in the chat, uh, please do so as well. Uncle Anva, we haven't heard from you tonight. <coughs> Any further questions, comments? Please, I'm going to give it a minute or two. Sorry, I didn't hear, I was a bit late for the halka, but I, I was hear, just hearing the ending of the, the concept of fitra. I don't know, according to my understanding, I don't know, I think I maybe got Shabir wrong, but maybe you are saying that uh, man is prone to evil. Uh, just to get the distinct clarification, is I just want to make this point clear that uh, According to my understanding, the situation is this way, that if uh, you have a choice to do the this thing, but now also when you're going to commit an act of wrong, something tells you in your, your instinct tells you you must not do it. Now, I don't know if that concept is correct. Well, you, Lama, you, I wasn't you, saying it's wrong. Okay. And uh, what it. I was saying is, it's part of the nature of the human. You see, if we take how Allah has described the man and his weakness, yeah. and Allah say he is foolish and he's unjust. Now Allah is right. deciding and Allah is informing the nature of the human. 
Now, it could be okay, one of two uh, things. We make choices that contradict what we should. We make choices against right. Allah. We choose only to satisfy our own desires. Allah says, why did we take on these things? Because Allah says, I offered this trust to, to all the inanimate objects. Now, we can say, okay, they were incapable of taking on the trust. But let's okay. say they had the capacity to take on the trust and they refused. Why, what did they know that man didn't know? Why didn't they do it? I mean, man is in a position of being, Allah says, everything is subject to man. The malaika makes you to man. The jinn makes you to man. So it means yeah. everybody is basically going to obey in, in essence. So everything that Allah has created in the world, that's limited just to the world here, is for the need and for the use of the human being. Yeah. And what Can is the purpose? Me? What are we supposed to do with these things? Oh, yeah. We are supposed to improve ourselves because judgment only is for us, not for anybody else. But we use it wrong, right. we do wrong with it. So when man ultimately needs the guidance, that's the way I look at it. That's where the Quran comes in. That's where the scripture comes in. That's where the Nabis yeah. come in. Now, I don't know if you instinctively, I'm not denying that instinctively you might have the capacity to know what's right and wrong. Right. But ultimately and over above and everything else, when Allah talks of the majority will choose the wrong path. Choosing the wrong path is also taking on other gods, other ideologies, yeah. other, uh, other systems. When you go the other way around, the Allah says that man is also prone to overtake the angels as well, spiritually or whatever, or whatever level. They can go higher yeah, than but the angels as well. But how? So that, how? I don't know if they, they uh, give themselves to Allah. Exactly. Which means you so give you yourself to the guidance. That, uh, man is only inclined to wrong, but man is inclined to good as well. Man is inclined to good. Man can be directed towards good. I'm not saying that. Like I said, it's difficult for me. I also don't I don't, have I don't the think, answer uh, to it. I, 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 just thinking, I was just thinking it out loud to say, Okay, okay. Allah says okay. we are unjust, we are wrong, we are we are foolish. That means there's something no, wrong. Allah, with you foolish, Allah recognizes Allah the other way around as well. So I think you've got to look at it in both ways. We mustn't go on the one side to say no, right? Allah has given us a nature to be good as well. You know, we were having an argument in some group. Uh, the guys were saying right. atheists okay. are atheists are generally good people. Uh, okay. they don't believe in they don't believe that a creator exists, there's no God, but they actually behave and the habits are in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the relation to, to men and the compassion they have. It's naturally within them to be good. Right. Now, I don't know if it's true. It could be. Look, I mean, some people is... don't, know, don't, know, okay. don't know of a God and they, behave, and, they, and they are actually good people. I agree with you. I mean, you have a point right. there. Uh, yeah. But I would think, so I think, I think the guidance... Uh, balance is of both ways. You see, the Quran says because something what about... I see is like... Like if I think a guy that's in uh, committing a crime, well, when I ask him, for example, yeah. what he says is that his instincts, when I ask him, does something tell you not to do it? Most of them give the same answer that it's uh, something tells them not to do it, but they still do it. Now, that's would a decision you say making that... that something tells you, do it or not do it, is your, your decision thereafter. Now, the psychology so I think the, the... the good is offered to you in that way as well. In but that Allah, says, also, Allah tells you to do the right thing, but you go and do the wrong thing. But Allah says he communicates with the human in many ways. Assuming you right. want to do something wrong, but, but you feel that you know what, you're not sure. Now, you can ask right. for guidance. Allah never said you can't ask for guidance. Yes. That, that basically actually would agree with you to say, you know, merely asking Allah to direct our choices and asking for guidance. Maybe intrinsically yeah. we are good, but I think we have the capacity for good. You know, you, you don't okay. simply have a person who's not socialized and then he decides that, you know, there is a God. It yeah. is so much, we were talking of nature and nurture. I mean, if a person is constantly treated badly, does bad things, when will he ever come right? But if you give him yeah. a little bit of light, a little bit of direction, like what you are doing, I'm like doing good work. You bring people back towards the truth and, and knowing that, you know, they can be good people. I just think it, yeah. it needs, it needs, well, it needs an outside, outside influence to help you. Yeah. Yeah, I think nature is there for us to do good, but sometimes we uh, get prone to evil. But it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we only go, uh, prone for uh, evil, but not for good. There must yeah, be a no, balance no, between are... the two, yeah. Yeah, no, okay, I can Inshallah. agree with you there. Okay. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Rai, salam alaikum. Salam. Rai, salam. Jazakallah, man. Right. Salik, you wanted to respond quickly. I see your slide is up there. Um, 
Okay, yeah, just basically it's um, just it seems to the, the, the men would want the easier way out generally. And then the good part is actually you have the potential to do good, but you have to make the effort to do good. It doesn't come so easily. Uh, so the potential is there for good or bad, but uh, bad or stinginess, you know, to do things for your own own benefit, it comes first before thinking of others. And then it's it's because we, once you've received the guidance or know about about the guidance or what what's required of you, that's when you when you you start to question yourself and make the effort to do good. So I think. What Shabiri is saying is not uh, is is more like you know you 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 it's easier to do the wrong stuff, but to do the good stuff, you need to make that effort. That's I think basically a summary of what I did. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, Jazakallah. Right, any other questions, comments? Uh, there's a comment on the chat. Yes, interesting about the stages of development of the of the human being as well, from self-serving to uh, uh, serving others. That is the stages of development. Again, but that requires uh, the person to uh, exercise the choice uh, uh, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has showed him the way uh, to uh, leading a life of, uh, you know, closer towards uh, or in line with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, or Allah's prerequisites are, uh, and for the pleasure of Allah to serve society, etc. Uh, that is all part of, I think, the broader framework of the creation of men um that and I, I think i think suratine as well is quite interesting uh, so so men, men will go down the path of destruction self-destruction and destruction of society unless uh he uh, uh you know chooses to believe and to write his deeds so um yeah okay uh sadiq any I don't see any other questions, comments here. Um, Sarik, anything in conclusion from you as a concluding remark? No, nothing to add. Nothing to add. Okay. Um, Asya, Jazakallah, uh, on behalf of the participants, I think the presentation was excellent, gave us a lot to think about. Uh, we'll all have some more homework to go and do and look at the words Bashar and San more closely and just see what, what meanings we can derive from it. Um, to understand uh, uh, better our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's some good, interesting articles out there as well uh, on uh, uh, that website that we normally refer to, quransmessage.com, about the difference in the use between the two words. Uh, so it will be good for us to do some more research and investigation into it. But Jazakallah for, for that uh, very informative presentation, well presented, well prepared. Uh, look forward to seeing you all uh, next week. Jazakallah for to the participants for taking your time to come out, listen and participate. Uh, look forward to seeing you all, inshallah, next week. Same time, same place. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.